Amitabh Ghosh joins me now. He's a space scientist who has been working on NASA's Mars mission since 1997. Amitabh, thanks so much for your time. Now, how significant thanks. is this space mission, not just for China, but globally? Well, it is very significant. So this is um, the latest space station. Um, it is um, being put together in record time. So that is very, very significant. And it has the latest technology. Um, and um, as for the larger implications to the global community, um, so we are, we as a community of scientists, are still grappling to live in space. So um, this is really an experiment to further that goal. So to give you a perspective, um, all the taikonauts you are seeing, they're going to stay in the space station for six months. But to go to Mars, it takes six months or seven months, and then come back is another seven months. You stay there another three months. And all this is not very far away. China, um, the US, everyone is trying to build the next generation of vehicles which will take humans to Mars and certainly to the moon. So, so um, Mars is 200 million miles away. The moon is uh, 0.3 million miles away. But all these are longer journeys. The human body has to get acclimatized. Uh, we have to deal with bone loss. We have to deal with muscle loss. And we have to deal with loneliness. You know, humans are not built to live in space. Um, we feel um, we are social animals. So all these challenges have to be addressed in the next 10 years before human beings live on a future generation spacecraft like the Starship, like the, the Chinese um, are developing the next generation of um, um, launch vehicles that will take them much further and away from Earth. So what else is needed to complete the construction of the station? And, you know, what kind of preparation goes into a mission like this, especially considering we're talking the long, long-term goal here? Absolutely. So so this is the second module, and this will be more or less bio, uh, bio, biology package and experiments like that. The next module will come, I think, in October, which will be the microgravity experiments. And then uh, you have the stable structure and you can use it as a lab for the next 10 years. Uh, what is the long-term implication? The long-term implication is to get humans more acclimatized to space. So I'll give you an example. So, you know, we have a circadian rhythm, right? That's why you feel sleepy in the evening and then you feel awake in the morning. Um, but on, in the space station, the space station is going around the Earth every 30 minutes. And so you have many sunsets and many sunrises in a in a 24-hour time span. So how does the human body cope with that? How does it cope with um, human um, lo loss of the muscles? So all this is very important for the longer haul. And then uh, you'll see some experiments here um, and some science. For example, there's an experiment which uh, studies tumor growth in low gravity. Um, if that was significantly different and interesting, um, that may be a lead to a cure for cancer, for example. Um, so that could be serendipitous, but, you know, there's another experiment about how bacteria uh, um, grows in space. So all these might have, um, it's, you can argue that it is basic science, but um, all, often discoveries are serendipitous, and that is what you're looking for here, a serendipitous discovery. Wonderful. Uh, Amitab, that's all the time we have for now. Amitab Grosh there, space scientist working on NASA's Ma Mars mission since 1997. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be